Hey everybody, Keenan Gray here from DieStat.com, bringing you another edition of Die Stat Discussions. It's Nutty Cone Weekend, Madison, Wisconsin. That'll be where everyone is heading out this weekend on Friday. And of course, one of those teams heading there, the number five team in the country on the women's side, the Washington Huskies, which for the first time, they'll be debuting as a Big Ten school in Big Ten country for the very first time. So that that's something exciting in itself and something I never thought I'd say in my entire lifetime being a, being a West Coast guy. I'm sure you would say the same thing, Chloe, but appreciate your time coming on here. You know, obviously, the I think the biggest thing to talk about is really just being the Big Ten school and now being a part of that. Like when you guys found out about that last year, whether it was through Marisa, whether it was through Randy or just maybe on through social media when the Huskies were joining, what was the initial reaction to that? I think that I was definitely shocked. <laughs> I feel like uh, growing up in Portland and on the West Coast, I've always dreamed about running the Pac-12. And we had, had a great time at the Pac-12 championships last year. And I don't know, it's kind of weird um, that we're now getting to go more in Big Ten country, like in the Midwest and all that kind of area. But Honestly, it doesn't change running, I feel like, as much as it does other sports because we just go to invitationals all the time and it's a lot of the same meets and stuff. But I think having, like, a different teams at conference will be exciting, but also a new challenge. So, yeah. Now, I know this will not be your guys' first race of the season and not the first time since you put on the uniform with the Big Ten logo. You guys had a dual meet against Seattle U not too long ago mm -hmm. when you saw the uniforms for the first time with that logo up in the right corner. Was it weird wearing that there? It was weird. I mean, they wanted us to give back our old uniforms with the Pac-12 logo on it just because they didn't want us to accidentally mix it up or something like that. But um, I don't know. It's weird. I feel like we don't. We haven't really seen much of the Big Ten yet, so it's kind of like we're in it, but we don't really know what it looks like. Um, yeah, I think it's definitely weird. Yeah, well, I'm sure the football team got a good taste of it on this Saturday when they played Northwestern in yeah. the very first Big Ten conference game. So I'm sure that that's kind of like the, the exposure within that. And obviously, I, I assume either you were a fan or you were watching a game, but it's just like, wow, this this is a new reality. And it's going to come <laughs> true for us this Friday when, when we're in Madison, Wisconsin. You know. yeah. Speaking of which, this team is incredibly deep. I mean, so many of the women return back from last year's team that finished eighth at nationals, but you also bring in some really, really key transfers into us. Tell us a little bit about this year's squad and why this team is ranked number five in the country and what really can we expect from the Huskies this year? I mean, it's definitely a deep squad. We have so many talented people that are still here from last year who have also just been getting better. Um, the whole year and people like Amina coming in is huge she is super talented and such a great addition to the team like the past couple weeks at training camp we've been working out five people deep seven people deep and really getting the most out of each other um, I don't know I think the sky's the limit with this team I think we're dreaming big and we know that we're super capable we just have to like take each day at a time um it's super special though I feel like we're all super close and it's been super fun getting to know everyone better but yeah we've got some fit runners and some really awesome people there so I'm excited to see how it goes I feel like you never really know until the first race lays out but um yeah I feel like you can definitely know that we're gonna be there fighting every single race <laughs> You know, for yourself, last year was really a breakthrough year. I mean, you go back to the fall and just the the momentum that you saw from the fall season where you guys won the last Pac-12 championship. You go into indoor. You, mm -hmm. you guys have a great DMR team assembled. You obviously run one of the fastest times ever recorded in Husky history in the mile. Then you go on to NCAAs and the U.S. Olympic trials. I mean, looking back last year, like, how really can you describe? I mean, just like everything it seemed like was just going in the right direction for you. Not yeah. to mention the fact you guys broke the collegiate record in the four by eight. Yeah, it was a wild ride. That's for sure. It was super fun. I feel like, I don't know. I always kind of dream big. And even like, I still talk with my coach Marisa about this. Like, I don't know. I couldn't even dream of what could have happened last year. Like it was just great momentum. Honestly, like every single race was just building off the next and like, having that momentum gives you so much confidence too. And I feel like I run my best when I'm full of confidence. Um, and yeah, I just had fun with it. And like, I didn't put any limits on myself. And I feel like this time last year, I was like, 
maybe I can do these things, but I don't really know. And I kind of went, was excited to maybe try to make it to the trials, but my PR was like not even close to making that at all last year. And it was just kind of a childish dream, I guess. And now it's reality and it's, I don't know. I am so grateful for Marisa for helping me like gain more confidence and just like really put my head down and just get into the training and having all of my team is like, especially like someone like Sophie, like who has run those big meets and those big times, like having her to look up to and know that like, if I can train with her, like I can do that too. <laughs> you know, this is the same exact person we're talking about that, you know, was just at Jesuit high school and it's obviously a standout in the 800 and in the 1500, but, but now you've kind of opened your horizon. Like the 6k seems to like be your range now, the 5k, <laughs> like how long did that really take for you to adjust with that? Because it's just yeah. two different races. I know. It is kind of crazy. I feel like my freshman year, my first ever 6K, I was like, oh my gosh, it is hard and it's long. And I dealt with some sickness freshman year, but I feel like last year, I don't know. I feel like I train, I've always trained pretty on the aerobic side and I just get mm -hmm. so strong that like I can do it. And it's not necessarily my favorite because it just takes a lot of like mental focus for me. And I really like just like checking out and kind of just running track races and stuff but um I feel like cross country is fun because I know that I can run with my teammates like worst comes to worst if I zone out my teammate will come right up behind me and be like hey snap out of it and um I don't know I feel like I'm not looking forward to any 5ks on the track or anything I don't know if that'll be in my cards but <laughs> I'm definitely gonna stick with the 15 and 8 as long as I can but I love cross and I just love like dying out there for my team. So, yeah. I mean, you were seven spots away from, from an All-American finish last year as a sophomore. I mean, that's, again, just going back to the point of that, you were a middle distance runner at Jesuit High School in Portland, and now you've become this all-around type of athlete, you know, working around girl, like women like Sophia Solf and Julia David-Smith, who have kind yeah. of done the longer stuff. Like, what's it like to have those types of athletes on your team and at practice day in and day out, knowing that, I got some of the best women on, in the country on my team. Yeah, I mean, it's amazing. It definitely helps me believe that I can do it. And honestly, like those longer tempo workouts and stuff, I lean on them and I'm like, hey, like I need you to pull me through this and I'll pull them through the ripping track sessions. Like it's all teamwork. Um, and I'm so grateful to have them because even like this year, I still knowing I have like a 30 minute tempo is a little bit scary, but knowing I have them to do it with is the world. And like knowing that I can do that, it makes a 6k not seem so scary. It's shorter than that. So yeah. Yeah. And obviously you don't have to run the 10k or the 8k like the men do. So it I makes know. it completely, completely easier, but it, yeah. it's crazy to think, you know, the, the class that you're in with Julia David Smith and Ella Borsheim, I mean, you guys go back to your high school days when you were, racing against each other at Oregon Relays or just at like Nike Portland XC. Like how close have you guys gotten these last couple of years, whether it's, you know, being friends, being like being teammates, Yeah. because you guys were always competing against one another when you were in high school. Yeah. It was so funny. My coach actually just found a picture of us running at like Woodbridge, which is a park in Seattle. Um, and it's me, Ella and Julia. And this was when we were like, 14 or something probably and now it's like what seven years later and we're still ripping mm -hmm. races and workouts together um it's super fun like I am roommates with Ella we live in a house and she was my freshman year roommate so we're super close um I had no idea that we would be this close coming here and Julia like I roomed with her all through our camp the past month or so and we're super close I don't know it's super fun knowing that I've known them since I was literally like 13 and when maybe I wasn't so good at running and maybe we were like just kind of dinking around the park together. But um, yeah, it's super fun. I love having them here. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about Altitude Camp. I know you guys were in Park City, just get an opportunity to be there. Obviously, you know, school's going to be starting on Wednesday, but it yeah. seems like you guys went back to Seattle and now you're going to be going not even going to class. You're just going right to, to Madison, <laughs> Wisconsin. So tell us about Altitude Camp, since apparently it was your very first time too. Yeah. Um, it was super fun. Uh, we stayed in my coach's friend's house and it was this beautiful house. We all got to stay together. And 
I don't know, it was a great opportunity to train, and we trained really hard, but altitude it makes it way harder too, so we kind of just hung out around the house the rest of the days, but it was a great opportunity just to get to know all of the new people. We had like seven new people on the team this year, and even just get closer with people that were on the team last year too. Um, yeah, it was super fun. I'm super glad that we went. Now, if I looked at it correctly, there are no incoming freshmen. I think on this team this year, you can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, So is that weird? Is that something new? I mean, like I said, you guys got seven new women this year, but Mm -hmm. they're not freshmen. They're veteran runners. They just come from different schools. Yeah. It's kind of funny. I'm still like one of the youngest on the team, even though I'm turning, I just turned 21. (laughs) Um, So yeah, I don't know. It is a little bit weird, but we do have some freshmen coming this next coming year. I don't know. I feel like it kind of ebbs and flows. And Marisa's super tight with her girls on the team. Like, we like to take a small squad, and she's really picky. So, um, I don't know. I kind of just maybe wasn't the right opportunity for some other freshmen this year. But, yeah, we will have come some in the future, which I'm excited about because I love having younger kids on the team. And all the grad trusters are great, but I really – I hope to like build bond with people over time too. Well, let's talk about some of those transfers. You mentioned Amina a little bit who was ninth at NCAA championships last mm-hmm. year. I mean, that's someone that, that just comes right off the, the paper right away. Uh, who else really yeah. can, can we kind of look forward to seeing this year that will really contribute to the Huskies? I mean, Maeve Styles from Penn, she's been doing great. Um, she is a, excellent 10k runner and really talented even like in a little bit of the trash lawn field um but she's super strong and been has been right up there with me and amina and even india who was on the team last year will definitely be up there too um claire yerby from cal has been working her butt off too like she is coming back from a tibia stress fracture from the spring but she has been working out great and I don't know. We have a lot of really skilled runners. I'm trying to think of anyone else. Sam Tran from Michigan is a great cross-country runner, too, but also coming back from some injury. So she might not make a debut until a little later. But, yeah, I don't know. Sophie also won't be running until a little later this season, too, just because she had such a long summer season. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I feel like we're just going to keep getting better. And a lot of the grad chancers – even if they don't necessarily run cross country, like we have some people who don't have cross country eligibility, like they're helping out with workouts and helping build team morale and like all this stuff. So, yeah. You feel like, do you feel like as a group, you guys have kind of, you're a versatile group. It seems like at, at all different levels, you know, you have like a Tori Herman, who's, a, who's an 800 mm-hmm. runner. You have Julia, who's more of the 5k, 10k. You have yourself mm-hmm. at 15. Is there, is there, it seems like there's a variety yeah. type of, of group this group this like the most variety that have been at the university of washington in a while yeah i mean it's super fun because i love mid d and we've got a lot of mid d girls but also like we train hard in cross country like we do the longer stuff with the 5k girls and it's not necessarily our most comfortable place but it makes you stronger for the later ends of the season where we want to be running faster times in track so I feel like cross country is a great time because it's not super specialized we like all do workouts together for the most part some 800 girls um not necessarily I guess but um yeah it's fun having so much range I mean I think we all want to be really good on the grass but we also want to be really good on the track and that's different for a lot of people like doing tempo workouts with 10k runners when I run like eights and 15s is kind of crazy to me, but (laughs) it's super fun. Yeah, no. And I think you kind of look at it that way in the sense of like, you know, coming in a freshman year and you were an eight fifteen person, but Mm -hmm. perhaps cross country is the reason why you had such a successful indoor and outdoor season. Is that, is that a fair assessment? Yeah, I think so. I think we all just talk about this is step one of the season, like getting in the work now, it's always going to be hard, but um, it builds such a great base for later on the, in the season when you're racing so much and maybe don't have as much time to get in a lot of like the longer, harder workouts, or you want to get sharper and do some more track workouts. So I think this is definitely, honestly, the key to like making a, a jump up in fitness is just being really consistent with like your strength-based training. 
when you look at what you guys accomplished last year, does, did it make you more excited for the next cross country season, even though you're more of a track like person? Because I, I can get this sense that like there's a new type of feeling within the cross country program at, at UW. It's just yeah. like we're hungry and we want some more from, <laughs> from what other than on the track, of course. Yeah, definitely. After winning Pac-12 last year, that was one of the best days with our team. It was so much fun. And I feel like we just crave it more. And now we're just, we know how capable we are. And um, I don't know, I feel like it just is so exciting to be here right now with this group. It's very special. And I feel like we're definitely brewing up something exciting. Especially when you look at the the school south of you, who is also brewing up something really good and obviously joining the Big Ten as well, the, yeah. the Ducks. I mean, yes, they had your hand in the outdoor season, but it seems like you guys are very evenly matched when it comes to the distance races. You know, how excited are you guys really, you know, to t see what you're able to do against Oregon, who, of course, is going to be at Eddie Cone this Friday. I mean, that's a team that... Maddie Elmore, it's got mm -hmm. Ceylon Ilides, uh, Annika Thompson. I don't think Claudia Kazmerska is going to be racing on Friday, but again, that's another person that has kind of, or not kind of, I should say, has contributed to, to, yeah. to the Oregon lineup. I mean, like, how, how big is that for the West Coast, but also for the Big Ten? I mean, it's kind of fun having somebody that we're familiar with, with the Pac-12. Like, we've raced them so many times, um, but also we're competitive. We want to see what we can do with that against them. Like we always want to be, beat the ducks. <laughs> um, but yeah, they're definitely a great matchup. I think we're all going to be looking for their green and yellow jerseys out there and seeing if we can tag onto them and yeah, seeing how well we match up. And I definitely think you two are going to try to make a big statement in the big 10, especially because you guys are the, are the new teams this year. Like everyone in the big 10 is like, Oh geez, now we have to bring yeah. in, in Oregon and Washington into the mix. I mean, now to kind of be the ones hunted, I mean, it's expected in the pac 12, but I mean, what, what does that just say about both programs and what they've been able to accomplish these last couple of years? I mean, heck it's been, I mean, not even a couple of years, just forever of what they've done. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's definitely like we're the new kids on the block. We definitely want to prove ourselves, show that we belong and that like, we're not here just to, like mess around and move out of the pac 12 and we're going to come big tens and like show our best runners and do what we can to make our statement there too. Like we left pac 12s on a win and now let's see what we can do about big tens. I don't know. Not many teams can say they won the big 10 and the pac 12 championships. <laughs> I mean, that would be a flex. If yeah. anybody were able to say, I mean, heck Stanford probably could say if they, if they ever to win the ACC, they also want to pack 12 at some point. Uh -huh. uh, same, same thing, obviously with Oregon in the, in the big 10, but yeah. you know, it's different. You know, like I said, you and I both grew up watching all this on the pack 12 and the West coast. Like mm -hmm. it, it, for me, it really hasn't sunk in quite yet. Do you think it will when you guys told the line on Friday? I don't know. I feel like I've run at Wisconsin every year that, we've had cross country. So I'm kind of used to running there, but I don't know, showing up with the big 10 on our Jersey, I think we'll feel a little bit weird. I think it'll feel most real when we go to Illinois for our conference meet <laughs> instead of that's just, the other thing. That's the other thing too, is like you, you're going to see some of these teams more than once potentially yeah. this year, which is, which is different than in the past. Do you mm -hmm. feel like that is, is going to be beneficial for you guys when, when it comes to potentially racing at nationals and, and knowing the familiarity of those schools? Yeah, I mean, the Big Ten has so many teams now that we'll be able to see how we match up against teams multiple times, which will be kind of fun. And we'll see like where we stand with them before it really matters at like regionals or nationals and stuff. I know last year at Nutty Cone was not necessarily the, the best performance by any means by you guys. Mm -hmm. What are you guys trying to hope to, what do you, what, what's your hope for this weekend? You know, like I said, it's, it's really, let's call it's really the season opener for you guys. I know you guys yeah. have that duel against, against Seattle, but really it's, it's the season opener and obviously yeah. a, an opportunity for you to, for you guys to show who, who the Huskies are made of. So wh what are the goals? What, what, what should we expect this weekend from you guys? I mean, I think we really want to test our limits. Like, I think you should expect to see some dogs up with the front pack, chasing the front pack. You're going to see us running in packs. We're going to see us finishing together and closing hard. Um, I don't really have any outcome goals for this weekend. I feel like we've been training super hard, so we're not necessarily fresh. But we want to go into this and 
do treat it as like just step one of the season and see where we are. Um, I don't know. I feel like you should expect our presence always. We're always going to be there fighting. And yeah, I'm excited to see what we can do and see if we can get some finishers up in the top 10 or whatever. We'll see. <laughs> yeah. And obviously the weather played a factor last year. It will not be like that, I, I assume, on Friday. Because yeah, uh, it was just torrential nice. downpour. <laughs> down, which I, I know, being in Seattle, you're used to raining and running in the rain. But the Midwest rain, I feel like, is a little bit more different than the Pacific yeah. Northwest rain. I agree. So that definitely... It definitely played a factor last last year. You know, you, you like you said, you've been on this course before. You know what it's like. For for those that, I th and I think everybody else has ran on this course. That's going to be on the starting line on Friday. What's some things you guys potentially could work on on this course that, like, because knowing that Nationals is there, you got you have to have a really good idea of what this course is. Mm -hmm. And I think Friday is the is the first step in like getting to have a feel of what that championship could be. Yeah, I mean, I think Wisconsin's a relatively hard course. I, it's pretty hilly, and the grass is sometimes squishy and muddy if it's raining, I guess. But hopefully it's not too rainy this weekend. I don't know. I feel like we're just going to be trying new things, taking risks. Because right now, it doesn't necessarily matter as much as when, like, nationals come. So trying new things and pushing up hills or pushing at a K to go or something like that and seeing how that goes. Um yeah, I feel like it's all kind of just trial and error, and we're actually coming back to run at the pre-nationals meet in Wisconsin, too. So we'll get another look at the course then. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I feel like this is a good learning experience, and if we don't have our best day, like I feel like we're really good at, say, like last year in Wisconsin wasn't necessarily our best team race, but the next meet was conference meet, and we were able to piece together what we learned from what maybe didn't go as well the last meet and really showed our best selves at the conference meet. So I don't know. I, if we don't do as well as we want to, like, I think that's totally okay. And we can just learn from it and get better the next time. Um, and like every year is a different squad of women running together. So we have to just to see what works for us. Yeah. Have you been, have you ever in your career raced at a same course more than once in one season? Uh, I mean, probably in high school, <laughs> but I don't think in college. Yeah. It's kind of weird. We're going to be going back hopefully in three times. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the, the, going back and forth, basically from Washington to Madison and back and forth, obviously, yeah. like, but it sounds like the first time around is going to be trial and error type of deal. Like, mm -hmm. it's just like, let's just go see what we're made of. And then, like you said, like, if, if things don't go as well, we try to fix those things and we come back the second time around with pre-nats. And then hopefully the third time, assuming we make the team, we make yeah. nationals, of course, that that will be our, our opportunity to really, really dial things down. So, you know, personally yeah. for you, like, do you, do you feel like from an individual perspective, like, so you were seven spots away from an All-American spot. Is mm -hmm. that something that's been on your mind? all this last year it's like i know what i'm capable of and i definitely could be an all-american oh yeah i definitely wasn't dwelling on it last year like i ha did what i could on that day and i don't know seven spots away is what like five seconds in that kind of race it's not really a big deal so um i don't know but i know that i want to like be an all-american not just by like a couple spots like i just i want to be there and show that i belong up there with those girls um i think that's definitely a goal of mine and yeah i'm happy i have some teammates who also have that goal so i can lean on them and we can just work together to try and get up there and see how much i can run with amina in these races and all of things like that so yeah i'm definitely looking forward to seeing how far up to the front i can finish <laughs> And we should expect you well out front this Friday? Um, maybe. I don't know. I guess I'll just see how it goes. I usually get off the line a little hard, so I might be up there towards the front, but we'll see. <laughs> that's, that's the 800, 1500 runner in you that's, that's talking right there. So, yeah. <laughs> well, Chloe, I really appreciate your time. Of course, the, the reigning 1500 Pac-12 champion and the Washington Huskies will be in Madison, Wisconsin this Friday for the Nutty Comb Invitational. You can catch that all on runnerspace.com. Good luck, Chloe, and to the number five dogs on Friday. Thank you.